OP NFB has been quite successful in attracting service providers as members. And I had a very interesting conversation this morning with uh, a representative from, a, from a, an, um, an operator. And he was saying uh, his role within the community is actually to point out what's missing. So, yeah. so you know, they, because they know their network, they operate their network, they actually know what's missing within, within the, the community. And they would tell people to actually yeah. develop that features. So, you know, from your perspective, how important is actually operators being part of the process? I think it's it's crucial actually, um, you know, and it and it's different in different phases. So I think early on, you know, we could we could do. I mean, it was hygiene getting the, the basics in place, but I think absolutely now and 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 going forward, uh, you know, that feedback on what they want to see next, how they believe they're going to build their networks, becomes absolutely crucial, not just from an operation perspective but also in things like how they're going to use the analytics, uh, how, the, how they're going to distribute that cloud out into the network. We can have ideas of how that's going to happen and we can provide technology, as, as Chris said, you know, we're good at providing technology. But the then scenarios of, you know, if it's, if it's you know, deployed uh, at a distance in Australia, that's going to be very different than if it's deployed in a dif distance in Germany because simply the, the kind of underlying infrastructure that can be supported there is going to be very different. So it's really important that we, we understand the nuances of the deployment scenarios or the, the, the challenges that they see I in operating networks. Bella? I think it's not even an optional, right? It is no. not yeah, an optional question. They should be part of this. This is something that's being built for them. And now is, you know, the the real chance of getting something that they really want to operate and not, you know, take a take something that was cookie cutter made and then being sold, right? This is the the time when we are building much more personalized network for every different operator. And that is possible now with the technology we have. So if they don't take advantage of that, I think it's just uh, it's a waste of all this effort. It, I would agree. It's 100% critical. Yeah. And it's one of the big values of open collaborative communities is usually we think of communities in the open source context in the wrapped around development and development activities. But we're building software for users. If users aren't a part of that community, it's not going to be nearly as successful. And we absolutely the whole premise in the beginning to me for OPNFE was understanding the user requirements so that we could re-articulate those in a language familiar to the development communities, which in many cases are not used to the other acronym soup, which is the <laughs> telco industry. Um, creating that kind of shared understanding, which all starts from the use cases, and the use cases are coming from the service providers. So 100% critical. and really the key value that collaborative communities can, can bring to bear. And I think it's, it's such a different mindset. I think that's where the initial challenge was. You know, the concepts of resilience, redundancy were, were, were words that we used uh, and we really didn't manage to get the, the understanding of what it is actually that we needed in place. So I think part of it was we've, uh, from a, a, a sort of a telco background or a service provider background is, to get those requirements understood in the open source community was just so difficult. Uh, and it's quite interesting to see such a shift now from, from open stack to being, you know, from being very enterprise focused early on to being, you know, nearly ex the last couple of conferences have been so focused on, on uh, you know, the service provider market as the next big market for, for, for open stack at least. Um, that the willingness to embrace this feedback has been extremely strong. And I think OPNFV has, has grown from being, how do we make our voice heard in, in, into the open source communities to say, OK, now, we need, now we've evolved to actually saying, how do you actually pull together a totality again? Because it, again, it's very different to how you use software in an enterprise where you can just have uh, software being quite isolated you really do need to pull the whole together to, again to, to make sure you get the kind of performance and characteristics and that's quite different to most other open source uh, communities I would say. Uh, so it's, it's really important that uh, the service providers uh, continue to embrace uh, and work with it uh, to continue the evolution of how we go forward and you see that I mean, in the conversations today, I mean, ONAP becomes so important to service providers to be able to do that automation of orchestration. 
and then how we, we pull that together in, in the OPNV community, I think, will, be, will continue to be critical going forward. I think it's not only the solutions, because that's it's the use case, it's the end-to-end, -end, which is unique yeah. to the network, uh, but it's also understanding the operational requirements. To what, what do you need? It's not just the functional requirements of how fast do I need to do packet processing, but it's what do you need to actually operate this infrastructure? And that's where yeah. projects like ONAP really uh, do shine, because they're trying to help bridge the underlying infrastructure to the operational insight that's critical to operators are used to understanding what's going on in their network. And part of that is a long history of um, operational experience. And if you go to standards bodies, there's often an operational component to a standard. Uh, here, we're trying to build that same operational experience so they get visibility and understand where things are working and how we need to redeploy or re, uh, shift traffic around or shift uh, applications. You, you can't do that if you don't actually understand from the operator's point of view what it means to successfully operate a network. So you three have been you know, working with OPNFV since the beginning. If you had access to the telecom TV time machine, uh, would you do anything differently? Uh, certainly. <laughs> I think we do a few things differently. But I think one of the things that uh, I would like to do differently, when we started with OpenStack, uh, it was obviously not uh, where we needed to be. So we, we did some modifications to that. What I would do is, we still would have done that, but I would have started the upstream work a lot earlier so that uh, we, we could have uh, exited the, you know, uh, doing our own code base much more quickly. I, you know, I, I was talking, I was thinking more about what we should have done as a collective industry more. I think I would have liked to see a lot more CMOs and CEOs talk about uh, NFE and SDN than the CTOs team. Yeah, that would have made a, bigger difference you know, two years ago if we had much more business related and operations related discussions before, you know, while the technology was going in parallel. I think we started talking about operations a bit later, which is always the case, yeah. which is always the case. But you know, every time we do it a little bit earlier. I think I would have maybe done two things. One is look at some ways to introduce automation and that cultural change without making significant infrastructure changes, just to build some of that muscle memory and understanding of how to do uh, automation and change your network without feeling like it's really a, a, the same risky process or risk-averse world that, that the operators have been steeped in. And then the other piece would be um, looking at it from an application point of view, where much of the work we did was platform-related and just enabling a simple simple migration, physical to virtual. Ultimately, we need to get to more cloud-native applications. And that's a long journey. And starting that as early as possible in parallel with changing the infrastructure is something I would have really wanted to champion more. It would have been great if the applications had moved more quickly. I think now is the worst time to be an infrastructure provider uh, because we have to be cloud native already, but we also still have to provide a lot of platform capabilities to the applications because in many cases they're not ready yet. So uh, I, I agree, applications, we could have pushed them a bit harder. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much, Susan, Bala, Chris.